Welcome to this week's episode of the Feeny Call. Uh, tonight we are bringing on uh, driver the number eighty four Dodge Challenger from the NASCAR Pinty series. Uh, his name is Action Larry Jackson. Um, so I met Larry actually through iRacing back when COVID first hit, when G Force was running their uh, small series, and. Got to talk to him a few times through iRacing, and we finally met at uh, Canadian Tire Motorsport Park in uh, 2023 at the uh, May 2 4 Castrol Speed Fest weekend. Um, and then basically, we uh, slowly talked about getting him on the podcast. So, uh, I'm glad to have Larry joining us tonight. Um, he's our first Penty star to come on to the podcast. I'm hoping there will be a few more with uh, Pinty's being the top echelon of, uh, well, basically NASCAR in Canada. Like, it's it's our top tier. So, um, Larry has earned a, a lot of respect, I believe, of a lot of his competitors. And uh, he's not exactly somebody that does it on a large budget. He uses a smaller budget and makes it work where he can still go race and compete and do actually quite well for uh, some of the people he's racing against. But uh, without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Action Larry Jackson. All right, joining us today is Action Larry Jackson. Uh, so I have to ask, what did you get the Action nickname like back from your Mossport days? I think so. I think we're, um, yeah, back in the day, I, Liquid Larry, Action Jackson. I, I kind of did a lot of silly, silly, uncalculated moves back in the day when things didn't cost as much or take as much time to fix. And uh, yeah, we drove quite wildly, maybe, as I was back then, totally opposite to what I do now. But uh, we're, we're entertaining. I was watching an old video of Flamborough Speedway back in, oh God, I might have been 17 years old. I remember going from a uh, dead last in a heat race, five, it was five wide. I was in the dirt and then I uh, go for the win in that race. And I'm like, oh my goodness. Like, yeah. Entertaining should be the word. What kind of car was a, your five wide at Flamborough? It, they were called Challengers. Challenger A and B back in the day. It was Challenger A. Low bolt stock clip car, very similar to Super Stocks now. Um, yeah, it was a pretty fast car. Fletcher kind of helped me build it and, and, uh, as well above its time, you know, there's two of us that really dominated Flambeau back in the day. So, um, you're obviously driving the Pinty series now in the number 84 Dodge Challenger. It's a beautiful looking car, I think. It's it's a very basic looking car, but it looks beautiful the way it is. Yeah. Um, so what else have you driven to get to where you are now? Like, what were the stepping stones to get to where you are now? Oh, no, you always forget this. If I can see if I can remember this. Uh, endurance racing when I was uh, 15, 16, uh, Challenger B, which is complete bone stock, street stock, uh, V8, uh, big steel chassis, steel body car from, uh, like, say, 17, 18, Challenger A, maybe, I guess, 18, 19, which is low bolts, uh, aluminum body, uh, aluminum tin kit cars for Sunset and uh, Lambro. We won a ton of races with those cars. And then from there, I'm guessing we went uh, oak wheel modified racing with uh, the number 29 car back after that, my early late teens, early 20s. I drove another for another guy, 61 modified with Wayne Getz for another multiple years. And I, I built my own car modified after that for Mossport, Kawartha, dominated those series back in the day. And then uh, started driving for the Bartons in a tour modified down Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Connecticut, all over the place. We started driving uh, one of those rock tour modifieds, you know, like 750 horsepower, two inches off the ground, 16 inches of rubber. Fastest cars in the world are amazing. Drove those for many, many years. 
came back to Ontario to drive late models at Kawartha Speedway. Did that through the mid 2005, six, seven, eight, I think around there. Sold a car, trying to get out of racing back then, trying to mature, buy a couple of properties and do some investments and kind of fell back into racing late models for other people. And then I think I got back into the NASCAR series about 12 or 11. I just want to buy a car, just drive around, have fun on the road courses. And uh, fortunately, unfortunately, now I got a bunch of cars and I'm running the series full time on my my own dime and my own team, which is uh, wasn't the plan at the time, which is to kind of do some road racing and have fun. And now it's ventured into way too much work, but fun work. <laughs> yeah, it's it's always good when the work is fun. Yeah. So um, there's a lot of people you've raced with in your career. Um, who are some guys you really like racing with in like the Penty series and maybe who's like some of the local short track guys you, you miss racing with? Oh, well, there's this one gentleman, Dan McCaddy. He's a uh, Kawartha Speedway. He, he was an ace at Kawartha Speedway. And if he didn't win, I won. And if I didn't win, he won. And him and I put on some epic battles so going back in the day. We, man, you think people hate, we hated each other. Man, we, we just were so rough on each other, but we had, we had a, cocktail afterwards and we were families were friends and it was you know it was a love hate relationship we ran really well that was that was so entertaining many many moons ago um darren wigglesworth and the modifieds at mossport him and i had wicked battles but we're best friends off the track uh pity series you know i love racing against dj kennington clean never puts a mark in his car you know his car's not running well he'll back up you know a couple spots and he always finishes right up front just uh He's a finisher. He's like Kevin Harvick. Um, if I could ever be near Andrew Ranger on the racetrack, Andrew Ranger is uh, just phenomenal. Like I remember, I always tell the story. I was at Toronto Indy back in 2012 or whenever we got, whenever, whenever we went there. And I'm grabbing gears and downshifting, going down Lakeshore, thinking I'm, you know, I'm all that for the moment. And then Andrew Ranger goes blown by me, like I'm sitting still. It's like, whoa, you know, yeah. So I love racing against those guys and. I'm not a road racer at all, but I love doing it. And that's the main reason I'm in the Pinty series to have fun. And, you know, I think I can hold my own on the road course now. Yeah, we had a couple of issues at CTMP the other day, but uh, yeah, we'll get that figured out. So you mentioned Dan McCaddy. I've got to run against Dan McCaddy at Peterborough in the late models. And he is, he hasn't worn out at all. He is still very hard to beat. Um, you're never going to pass him on the outside of Peterborough. I think. I was close and then I just abused the tires. Yeah. Um, but he's also one of the cleanest guys you'll run. Against. Like you can run door to door with Dan all day long. He's not going to slip up. He's going to give you the respect you deserve. So I understand uh, why you like running with him. And I haven't got to run against DJ and other than like iRacing racing and stuff like that. So I yeah. brought up in the intro that uh, that's actually how me and you met was through iRacing, racing uh, doing the G force TV specials. And once in a while you try to scoot down and, play a little bit of high racing is there maybe like plans to like try to like bring in some like like some fans like you can almost do like a larry jackson race with a couple of fans and stuff like that maybe in a winter oh you know i'd love to um yeah I, as you know you racer as well so we work so much on these stupid cars and it, you know i try and i try and do a little bit of racing here and there the i race i i got a i built a little cool little rig myself downstairs and uh takes up my my wife has it in about three by four spot in the basement that's all i'm allowed and uh i, I probably only got it on it like four times five times this winter it's uh unfortunate or a waste of money we're just sitting there um but i'd love to do something I, and i suck at it though it's good it's like uh you know i think i can wheel a car pretty decent and uh here i am on a on uh whatever you call it on the i racing and i remember one guy's like what are you doing in here you shouldn't even be in this thing you know i just graduate to that level and next time i'm wrecking a bunch of cars so i'm like ah shit but <laughs> uh you know i'm on this world to have a good time and uh i definitely did and i i don't mean to make people upset but uh that's you know shit happens yeah sometimes people think that hendrix calling on a video game yeah you know what i know that some people make some money on that deal but you know i'm you know, Fletcher gets on there once in a while. And Fletcher's really good at it. And I try and follow him and do some things with him. And he's always laughing his ass off at me because I'm upside down in the wall or, you know, it, it, I don't know if it's my setups or whatever I need. I, 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 I definitely need a hand. I need a trade and lap switch for an afternoon to get his ass over here and uh, tune up my little rig. <laughs> 
Yeah, so this is why I run fixed setup stuff now, so I don't have to worry about doing all the setups. Because I think yeah, we were, I think the ahead. last race we were in was uh, the Montreal uh, Cirque Gilles Villeneuve, and I I was messing up that last hairpin. I slid through it. I don't know how many times, and you blew yeah. by me. But that, that, that's a little bit of you know. I think you've run there in real life, haven't you? I have. Yeah, that have done run twice there. I think. Yeah, it's an amazing track. I can't wait to go back there. I know NASCAR is talking about going back there. Hopefully, bringing the Xfinity Series, maybe the Cup Series, there one day. Uh, I think it's an opportunity they definitely have to take advantage of, and then will be the sideshow for sure. And uh, that track is just a dream to drive on. It's so smooth and, and just so much fun. Way easier to do it in real life than it is on that stupid eye racing machine we do. <laughs> yeah. um, I always find it's way easier to drive. Like, so I drive super stock in Peterborough. I can't drive the Thunder Car, whatever they call it, the street stock in the video game. It's like I can't feel it turn sideways. So I don't know what to do, like with the hands and like turn them. I'm like, I, I'm like it doesn't give me like a realistic uh, feedback through. Like I have a fan attack wheel and stuff like that, and oh yeah, yeah. it kicks back. But like I, I don't know what I to think do when on the video game. Racers usually are butt feeling, right? We feel it. They feel the car in the butt. So when the car gets loose, it's in our butt first, and then we catch it in our hands. But these kids can feel it in, I don't know if they see it visually or they, they feel the wheel before we do. So I'm always, it seems like I'm catching the car, you know, and the more you do it, the, the better we are. But the kids, the kids that do it often are, man, they're so good. And it's like, you know, and I'm, I'm like, I'm thinking, oh, they're set up or their wheel or the pedals. And it's not, it's just, it's just, they've got a million laps and us old guys are, or this old guys. Yeah. Doesn't got it. It doesn't mind though. I, I, I have fun. That and sometimes they have a lot of time to practice. Not Correct. everyone does, but like when you got to work a full time job and they just can play video games and get better at it, it's it's hard to be. It's like if somebody had a Pinty's car and they got to run it every day of the week, that you're not going to beat them. Like they just no. have so much lap time and it. it's repetition, right? Correct. And then that's you know I got a lot of laps in in life, but uh, still only adds up to so much. So yeah. So I had a couple fan questions submitted. Uh, oh, one, they're they're pretty good. Uh, there's nothing too horrible. Um, the first one is from uh, Cam Harris, as you know from the Stickers and Scuff podcast. I do. Um, he was asking how much Wonder Bread you're going through now. Well, we're going through quite a bit. You know, uh, it's a surprising. We have a small little team, but we eat a lot. And uh, my wife used to work for um, Wonder. And uh, somehow things got together with a friend of ours or a friend of hers. We're going to do a Wonder National commercial this summer. I think at the end of July, I got to fly back from Edmonton, come back for a couple of days of shooting, hopefully get back out to Saskatoon for the race. I think it's shooting the same day. So somebody might get lucky and get to go in my car that day, but don't try and keep it a secret. I'm not sure yet. Um, yeah, that, uh, we're eating lots of it. They're going to take care of us. They're a little associate sponsor on the trunk of the car for the rest of the year. And uh, we're going to do some national commercial and ordering a fire suit tomorrow with uh, that Jerry Hall de designed for me. And uh, it's all, I uh, got the proper logos and all legit from the lawyers, finally. It, uh, it's amazing how many, how things go nowadays with lawyers looking at stuff and proposals and invoicing and, and the crazy stuff that takes the fun out of racing, but it's necessary to to do the silly stuff that we do. So I, I have to ask, and hopefully I know this doesn't get you in trouble, with the Wonder Bread sponsor, are you kind of like getting like the Ricky Bod be references when you people see you at the racetrack or is it like, is it not clicking in like with fans they and stuff like that? They do, they do. I'm the weak one when it comes to that link, you know. And and I, I, I don't have it down pat yet, you know. Like <laughs> everybody else got it, and I love the movie. I'm just, I'm just when it comes to acting or, or shy. I guess I'm kind of shy when it comes to that craziness, right? And I'm not that silly anymore. I'm old, and I'm like, I, I keep telling them, like, for the commercial, you sure you don't want my daughter? Like, my daughter can do it. She can do a burnout in the car or do whatever needs to be done. She's you know, trying to, I'm trying to sell that aspect. Or even Matthew Scannell, like, sc scoot him over. He's 25. He's good-looking, well-spoken. You don't want this old guy in there. But uh, we'll see what happens. It uh, That's not all. That part's not done yet. We'll see. I know the car's getting done, wrapped, and, and fire suits are ordered. So. so the second person I have is uh, Jonathan Morrison from Jomo Media. Yeah. Uh, 
his question is being a smaller team, what are the struggles that you face uh, getting cars prepared for each race with like all the different types of tracks you go to? Just time, time and money. But you, you don't want to dwell on the money because it the money is what it, it is what it is now. It um we have enough to survive. We don't have enough to run with the big teams. But Larry Jackson should be a top eighth to twelfth place finish at every race now. We have enough money for brand new tires every race and fuel and memberships and food and you know I got enough parts and cars and stuff and motors now that uh, it's taking a little while to build up. But we're we're there. This, this one more year of building up, and I think that we can step on the gas pedal and, and try and put yourself in a couple of little tighter spots and, and, and take some more chances and put a little more gear to the motors and, you know, a little newer brakes and, you know, update a couple of cars and lighten some things up. But uh, we're getting there. Um, we got dirt purpose, dirt, purpose built dirt car. We got a purpose built road course car. We got a purpose built oval car. We got Matthew in our second um, road course car. And then we have another oval car that we're going to rent out once in a while just to make some funds back. It's a, it's a really good piece that Aaron Turkey had last year. Set fast time. And for a little team, doesn't sound very little anymore. Um, we're looking at tractor trailers and, you know, we're hoping to buy, I got my A license so I can drive rig. My brother's got a, a tractor that I can borrow once in a while. And, you know, we're looking at a tractor or a trailer, but trailers are ridiculously priced right now and not a necessity. It'd, it'd be a, a nice to have. And, my sponsors are, they're cool with whatever we bring out. And as long as we do show days and, and counter days, as they put it, and do some commercials and send, you know, the social media stuff, they don't care where we finish. They want to make sure we look good. Uh, we, we're kind to our fans. We're kind to our people, uh, our crew. And finishing is a bonus. But uh, even like Mossport last week or CTMP, we had 40 to 50 kids sit in the car at at the at the fan. When you, when you and I were... I was going to say shooting the shit because we're chatting and I give out 500 hero cards or those fan cards. And that's what my sponsor loves. He loves that his name's out there and it's, it's the kid, the kids enjoy it as well. You know, a bunch of first timers were there and with that free ticket from uh Canadian tire, them giving that out last year, I think we had a lot of first time people there and we put a lot of first time people through that or in our car and, some people that you'd never think would sit in the race car were sitting in the race car and all these young girls were just having a blast and hopefully Instagramming and tweeting and whatever they do. TikToking so, and Snapchatting and yeah, all that all, fancy all the social media. The stuff that I got a girl Jess Jess does all my stuff because I'm so far archaic and just one thing I can't do at the racetrack. That's just if I had more time I could do it, but well maybe not, but you know, time. Time I just give me some more time would be better. Yeah. Time is the one thing you can't buy no matter how much money you start with. Correct. And if I could divide myself in four or five, it'd be better. But, you know, it's always good. we got lots of crew guys, lots of people wanting to volunteer. It's just trying to teach them and getting them up to speed. And, you know, like you got to do bearings this way or do brakes or we like things packed in the trailer a certain way. And, you know, we got a little trailer, so it's going to be packed properly. It's just better to just do it yourself and just get up earlier and stay later. And, yeah, it's uh. That's what I love to do in my part-time gig, I guess. So you you bring up with how good you are the fans, and that's the one thing I really liked seeing you at CTMP. A lot of drivers, yeah, they were signing the autographs, but they, they had the window nets out. They weren't really interacting. It was just like a signature ghosting. Were you like every single person that came up to your car you interacted with? Uh, we talked. I would stop talking as you were talking to the kids because they're way more important. I know this I'm as a driver because, like, a kid walks up to me. They don't know the difference between me or you or Dale Jr. or anything like that. We're, Correct. We're the biggest star they've ever met in the world, right? So, like, the amount of time that you took with each kid to actually have a conversation, put them in the car. So, like, you've been doing this for years. Is it just something that's what makes you enjoy racing is watching those kids light up as you take the 15 minutes to have a conversation? Is is that where that goes? Yeah, yeah. It's all about the kids. You know what? uh I guess it comes back from, I've been a uh, fireman for 25 years too, right? So showing the kids the fire truck or showing them tools or showing, uh, say, a, a visually impaired child, like just taking their hand and writing the number of my truck as an S110 and just showing somebody something that I get to do every day and I love to do my firefighting stuff, my race cars. And I'm not going to go out there and win a Pinty's race. I'm 
Yeah, you might you might sneak out of top three. I've mean, stuck out of top three before. Hopefully, sneak out a couple of top fives this year. Who knows? The as long as we're there having fun, and I can introduce new people to the sport, and uh, yeah, make somebody's life a little better. It's a tough world out there right now. Yeah. So, with you being a firefighter, um, something you might not know is I did demolition derbies and stuff as a when I was younger before I smashed my head a bunch of times and made oh, myself why? dumber. Um, so I actually had the number 343 as my car number. So as a firefighter, you know what that means. Yes, sir. Um, so when I started doing that, everyone's running like a 911 number, stuff like that. And I went up to it was someone that looked a lot like you at one of the fairgrounds. But I think all the senior firefighters almost all look the same. <laughs> you all get stressed <laughs> out. You all get stressed out. You all got the gray hair. Yeah, yeah, but, thanks. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that was one thing that I found it was the best way kind of to, like, I had a Maltese cross with a 343 on the car, every, every yeah. single derby car I had. So I I got to personally thank you for running into buildings while everybody else is running out. Oh, thanks. So. Thanks, you know. I got a little thing about 9-11. We went to, down nine, when 9-11 happened, I was working that day, uh, City of Mississauga, at my station. And uh, I remember a week later, two weeks later, when they're finding bodies and stuff, and the, the New York guys were tuckered out. We we went down there, went down to the pile, and we went to nine funerals in like like four four or five days, and you know, we, it was just so crazy, and and you know, to see it firsthand was it's nuts, and you know, you run in three forty three, and people run nine eleven, and it just just you you can't forget. It's been so many years. It's been so many years, but it's it feels like it was yesterday for the people that were alive when all it yeah. took place. And without trying to go into a somber note too much, we'll uh, break away a little bit. But that was yeah. kind of a good segue there. Yeah. Um. So you've driven a lot of places, racetracks. If the Pinty Series could go to one oval track that you don't go to right now and one road course... What are two that you'd love to see back on the schedule? Well, as we spoke earlier, the Montreal Jacques Villeneuve course, I'm hoping that we get back there. And it sounds like we are. We we're talking to uh, Steve O'Donnell like a year ago, and he was hoping that we can get back there in the next couple of years with the, the National Series. Um, Oval, Chicasa, right? Like Chicasa is so much fun and so much on the throttle time and, momentum track and i think i'm really really good there like we only get i only got to race my good car there one time and we were running really really well and it was just a shakedown day it was really good we had old tires i think we were running fifth both both races canada canada wide and down the states uh you know i don't know if you know the old uh Ashwe uh Ashwego. this the uh it's uh where the modifieds run there's a steel plates on the inside it's a half mile really well maybe it's five eighths really flat and fast and yeah, it's a pretty awesome track as well for an oval that's still running. <laughs> so you've driven, like I said, a bunch of different cars and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Is the Pinties where you've had the most amount of fun or was there like their cars that you haven't run that you had more of a blast just because like it wasn't as expensive to run? Like was it the Challenger A class was where you kind of like you smiled oh, yeah. every time or is it like are you having the most amount of fun in the Pinties car right now? Well, I think anytime you get in something that you can just have fun in, I, I try to make the best of everything. The CTMP is my favorite Pinty's track. I know I'm not very good there, but I have a freaking hell of a good time in that car. You know, grabbing gears. I think we shift on, I'll say, 14 times times 51 laps or over 700 shifts uh, a race, and you can't miss one of them. And you know, match your RPMs, downshifting is so much fun. And I tell all my oval track buddies like that haven't tried it before, you got to try this. Like just one time, get in a Pinty's car, take it out for a test. Try not to break the transmission because they're ten thousand dollars, and it's like, oh my god. And you know these motors are like, oh, you know, so they're fifty five thousand dollars now. It's like, oh my god, um, so much fun. Uh, yeah. Let's see, I forgot the question already, but I thought it was which car do you have the most amount of fun in? Most fun, yeah. I'd say Pinty's car, road course, and then for. Oval track racing, my late model at Quartha, it was always on rails. If I wasn't pushing Brandon Watson around the track or Dan McCaddy and or vice versa, it, back in the 07, 08, 09 years, it was just so easy. 
it was so much fun so easy great racing you know i i, I come from tour modified so the race cars were twice as fast back down the states and they were rough and i remember coming up here and maybe giving dan the bumper or, or dave morgan the bumper up here and they're like what are you doing i'm like i just thought it was natural right just you know you're shifting on restarts and those guys weren't shifting on restarts and and you're like, I'm just so used to running down the States and they're just so aggressive and so seems they're more advanced, I guess, just in, just a little bit of everything. And then you come back up here and you forget that, you know, Canadian guys are way more respectful. And and it's I think I was a little bit of a, a bully when I came back up here. And I apologize to those guys now. I'm sorry. So what would it take for... Uh up and comer like starting through like the ranks of uh racing and stuff like that what would it take for them other than money like what would what what cars would you suggest that they start like going through to try to get into like a pinty's ride or like maybe like be able to rent a car from you or something like that so they can actually start in the pinty series well it's it's um todd Bo no not todd bodine brett bodine down in uh daytona that you gotta send a resume to to nascar and then they can decide if you guys are or whoever's capable of running one of these cars, which it seems like it's pretty lax nowadays. It's they're looking for drivers. You know, if you can get in a a modified or a late model, you know, you don't need an APC car. APC car is very similar to our cars. They're just as fast, same kind of money. Um, the talent levels the exact same in the APC level as well. But like a, a lower level limited late model or a late model, and then get the experience of horsepower to weight ratio. You know, and then, you know, and knowing the width of your car and where your bumpers are and, and just laps and laps and laps. And it, mm -hmm. you know, when it comes to money, it's not, if you have money, it's easier. Yes. But if you can just turn laps and you don't have any, go out there and make your car a little bit better every week. You don't need to go up and run up front and put new tires on, you know, guys like myself, we notice guys that finish, you know, like, like an eighth or a 10th consistently and don't put a mark on the car. And you're like, you know, like I did, you know, that's an opportunity that person might have, you know, we can give back in the future. You know, it's that guy that's running in, you know, running up front and may win or one or two races that smashes the car every week. You don't want him in your car. You know, some guys are quick, but they're, they're just, you just menaces on racetracks. So, and then for young guys, I always thought there's a lot of older guys like myself that are trying to get back and out of racing and that there's going to be seat opportunities like in late models and modifieds and there's even street stocks. I see there's a bunch of older guys that are just looking for some young talent and this young talent just needs to get their asses to the garage and assist these guys, you know, maybe spend a year crewing for them and then, you know, show them that they, you know, want to drive. And I, I know there's a bunch of guys my age that would like to back out and put some younger talent in, but we just want to see you guys put some force, some effort and, and some, you know, some sweat equity before you put somebody in the car. Yeah, you want someone that if they do mess the car up, they're there first thing Monday morning yeah. putting the thing back together. You yeah, don't, want don't want someone to just to show up and oh well, whatever. Yeah, yeah, I think it hands up. I, I want you to get your grubs on. I want you to shop the car to the plate with me. We're gonna cut the clip off. I want you to hand me the tubing. I'll show you how to cut it. And you know, if you're a good enough welder, I'll let you weld it together. But I want you side by side with me welding the clip back on the car or building the control arm or you know, like fitting tubing, you know, or pop riveting, like. It seems like we've had a bunch of kids come through the shop and, you know, all we want to volunteer and they volunteer and they put in a, you know, they put in eight hours and yes, racers don't put in eight hours. And, <laughs> you know, Friday could be 20 hours and you get up 6 a.m. the next morning, you put in another 20 hour day in, you get four hours sleep and you get up Sunday and you, you drive home eight or nine hours, right? Or, or you drive, like we'll go to show day next week or two weeks from now. We'll leave. Sometimes you don't get up at all. You're still awake as you're going yeah, to the we, track and you're putting the car together. Yeah, you know, we drive through the night and we get home, we unload the car at seven in the morning and you know, you go home, have a couple hours a couple hours of sleep. And if the family's out and out and about, you go back to the shop, start getting the car ready for the next race. But we had a couple of kids and they, we just murdered them. And it's it's a bunch of old 50 year olds. We're not even young anymore. And these these young 20, mid 20 kids just can't cut it. It's if you want to ride the car for free, I think you need to put some sweat equity in it. Like, yeah. So Yeah, I've got a, a kid that was co-oping at my work. Um, his name's Octavius, but I call him Hey You because I half time forget his name. Yeah. So he helped me last year. He was he was doing all that. He was set, doing everything, setting the tire pressures, all that stuff. And um he did a really good job. Now he's he's going off to run a couple of derbies and stuff like that. And 
he's I, I have the mini stock that I might throw him in once in a while, but he's he, he's got to. I told him he's got to have all his own gear, and like he's got to show me that like if he's going to invest in the gear and stuff like that, he's got to be willing to put that car back together, even as a mini stock. Like it's it's not oh, cheap God, anymore. Yeah. Like you used to be able to get a mini stock going for like fifteen hundred bucks, but now they're like five six thousand dollars, and the tires alone are a thousand dollars and you know exactly what it's like. It's like I pop a tire, break a strut, right? Like, yeah. yeah. Well, it's it's a lot of people don't realize. So when you went on people who menaces on the track, I I always said this, and I it was something I heard early on. There are drivers that can drive really fast, and then there's guys that can race. Mm -hmm. So I learned off of people like JBJ. And uh, Dan Price, if those names ring a bell to you. Um, I was actually at Dan Price's uh, last night helping him fix the modified and using the porter powder. and Just just like the little things. He's helped me on my car. I've always offered, if someone helps me, I'll help them. Yeah. Um, but I, we're running down on time here. So I'm going to give you a few minutes to uh, go on, maybe give us a little bit of your schedule coming up. Uh, oh, thank wow. Thank all your sponsors you got kicking around. Maybe where we can find you on social media, buy some merchandise. Yeah, we um, you, you caught me off guard there. Uh, yeah, we're in the Pinty Series, and I, I think we're going to show DA the next two weeks from now, and then after that's down east, uh, June twenty fourth, and then we're off to Toronto Indy, and then we're out to Edmonton, Saskatchewan. After that, let's see if I, I got to throw an iCar in there. Yeah, there's GP three R. And I think there's a, a CTMP in a Delaware. So there's a 14 race schedule this year in NASCAR. We've got two races down. we got a ninth and a 13th. Now you can find me at uh, Larry Jackson Vroom, I think, uh, on Instagram. And there's an 80, Larry Jackson 84 on Twitter, I think it is. I got a girl that does all that for me. So thank God for her. Jess is amazing. Um, and then uh, when it comes to merch, we're, we're working on some stuff. We've got some hockey jerseys coming out. Uh, they're all coming up soon. And then we got a whole bunch of O'Neill shirts. If uh swing by and we'll give you some O'Neill t-shirts and we got a couple hats there. So yeah, just gotta ask. And if we have them, they're we're welcome. Everybody's welcome to them. So um yeah, life is pretty good for this uh 84 50 series O'Neill car. I can uh, set you up with a girl that makes like the custom drink tumblers and stuff like that. Oh um, yeah. She does them for a very good price and does super quality work. Uh, it's uh, tailored to you, media and design. She, yeah. I don't know if you have me on Facebook or not. I actually haven't looked and checked. I think I sent you a friend request, but I don't know if you've accepted oh. it yet. Don't don't but, get mad because I get I get everybody gets thousands. Of, right? I have no idea who's legit and who's fake. I guess you don't know who's spam. Yeah, I'm an old man. And I'm like, first I get a friend request for my best buddy here. How many times? I just give up. I'm not even friends with him anymore because I don't even know if it's – I was friends with him. How can you get friends requests again? I don't know. I'm too yeah. old. Shit. But yeah, like I said, if you want to get stuff like that, I found that the ladies love having stuff like the tumblers and stuff, like where the guys love the T-shirts and yeah. stuff like that. Or like, And honestly, without – guys like us like i i have a very low budget team as well like i whatever i make at work goes into my car luckily oh, yeah. i don't have i don't have a girlfriend i have to spend the money on right now so it, it's a little better for me so i have two cars yeah <laughs> but yeah. uh yeah the merchandise is one of those things that keeps guys like us going and um yeah you know what? i'm that's i'm weak on my part or bad on my part we just started doing some shirts this year you know, I was going to do a big order this winter, and then next, you know, we had no idea who our sponsors were. And O'Neill wasn't on board till, till like, uh, I don't know, end of March. It's like, Mike's like, he was just busy and, and he just couldn't get set up meetings. And we we're supposed to have a meeting in October, November, December, and just life gets busy. And then we get, we get a bunch of different sponsors and, you know, trying to get hero cards geared up. And we still got another batch of hero cards coming up next week because we got a whole bunch of different little sponsors. We still, Got irons in the fire for the Toronto Indy. I think we got another sponsor for that race as well. And then, uh, yeah, it's crazy. Things, you know, it's not a bad thing nowadays. I've never had this much lawyer stuff and invoicing and contracts. And my my wife's involved finally. She she would never help with racing at all. And when it comes to invoicing and collecting money, she's right there. She's my girl. Yeah. Um, if anyone's looking to sponsor uh, Mr. Larry Jackson or even one of your team cars, how can they get a hold of you and maybe start get the conversation going? Yeah, you can just reach me at, uh, I guess my phone number is 905-330-2406. 
give me a call, give me a text. Uh, if I don't get back to you, I'm just underneath the car wrenching usually. Or in a burning building. <laughs> or in a burning, yeah, burning building. Sometimes I answer my phone, but uh, it's dinging right now. So um, it's uh, it, it's funny. I don't know. I get like a hundred texts a day and like 30 emails. And my wife laughs at me because she gets like 300 emails a day and like a thousand texts a day. With, she's corporate. And and I'm like, I can't deal with this too much. Cause I, you know, all I want to do is rent on cars and my daughter, I, my daughter bought a house just recently. So I'm trying to renovate that house as well and trying to get rental cars geared up and yeah, it's pretty hectic right now. So yeah, it's all good. If it doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger. That is true, or at least makes for entertaining racing. Correct. Correct. <laughs> now, I, I think we're going to spend more time on our cars. And if Mr. Ranger, even though he's one of my favorite drivers, doesn't drive through me again, like he did at sunset, I, I'm going to spend a week and a half putting my body back together on a car, not making it faster, just putting more Bondo on it, slowing it down. So that's, yeah. that's one of the things I hate. Like, I hate repairing the car. Like, sometimes it's nece- like it's at a necessity and like accidents happen, but. I hate when it's like someone wasn't paying attention and you get hit under yellow and it's like, oh, I got to put 300 rivets in for no good reason. <laughs> yeah. And I, and people know me, I'm pretty cheap too. I'm like, oh my God, those 300 rivets cost X. And, you know, like, and they I'm, weigh X. Yeah. And putting well, bond, like, I got a, I do have, I'm lucky. I got Dave Stevens. He's, um, he's a retired, it's about 55. He comes to my shop every day and he's, he's, I, I work him like a dog. <laughs> he's my buddy. He, uh, he he takes care of the bodies in the race car, thank God, because I'm terrible at body work and I hate vinyl and Chuck at B squared. He's like my big brother. He's got a he's got his shop in the front of the shop. And you know, luckily I, I spoiled around with the vinyl guy in the shop and the body guy there. But still it's 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 two weeks of our time of 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 trying to repair the car instead of bump steering the car or stringing the car or checking, you know, just valves or you know, just updating stuff or making a spare car better right like yeah but that's that's the the series the series is or seems like all racing right now even from the the top down just so rough you know you know i want to be like dj kennington i don't i don't want to drive a race and not put a mark on the car that used to be me i I moved up a few spots into a little bit more competitive racing and it seems like when you move up those five spots it gets a little rougher so but it's cost cost of doing business now. We just uh, wish guys would take it a little easier. Not going to be Denny Hamlin whining too much, but <laughs> uh, it's always my back bumper that's ripped off, not my front one. So it tells you something. I'm going to thank you for joining us. Uh, I appreciate you spending uh, your valuable time that you could be wrenching on the car right now. No um, I can't wait to see you at your next race. So. Uh, Hopefully, I'll be able to go to it. Maybe I'll sneak out to uh, one of the Montreal races. I've never been out to Montreal, but maybe I'll sneak out and we'll come talk again. Definitely. I enjoy that. Thank you.